They called him the Diesel. Drink up that Diesel. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm, oh, I'm. He leaned across the table and he goes, you need to get me back there. I'll make you famous. And to Riggins, good hold. He's got the first down to the 40. He's gone. The 35, the 30, the 20. He's gone. He's gone. It's Rigo the Diesel. Welcome to this episode number 60 of Rigo the Diesel. I am Rigo. I'm John Riggins. Larry Michael, voice of the Washington Redskins, Hi John. sitting here with me. How you doing, Larry? Pretty good. As I walked in, I saw it. Dexter Manley here. Does that foreshadow something yes. that might be happening down the road? Well, all these promises we've been making this fall <laughs> about you know future shows. Uh, Dexter and I got, uh, I would say, knee deep into his uh, early life and career here. Wow. So we've got things coming together. Some look forward to. It's an uh, yes, exactly. The off season is going to be a is going to be an interesting off season, not only here but on the podcast. It's been interesting the last week here. Yes, John. it has. I, mean, I was just ready to say since we last spoke, a the lot has happened, podcast. and it's and still it, happening. It is still happening. So I don't know if I have any special update here. There's uh, uh, there's been all kinds of news. Uh, medical staff, uh, Doctor Wilkes coming on board. He's a, a very famous physical therapist who is work with people at the highest level. People like Michael Jordan. Drew Brees. Where's he, now, where does he located? He's in Birmingham, Alabama, and I don't know where he's going to be residing or any of that, but it was announced today that he's on board. And then the new uh, head athletic trainer, Ryan Vermillion, who is a very respected guy, actually was here in 2002, and he worked under a guy named Bubba Tire. And he says, do you know is Bubba? That right? He says, you know Bubba? I said, do I know Bubba? Bubba's a legend here, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so... It's exciting. And then the coaching staff, there haven't been a lot of announcements made. Um, I do the, know they're doing their diligence, and, you know, there's other jobs open around the National Football League. So I think announcements will be coming uh, as they finish putting the staff together. But uh, Jack Del Rio was announced okay. as the defensive coordinator. He's a real impressive individual. So things are things are looking up. Things are very exciting right here, right now. A lot of optimism right now. Well, uh, uh, since we last spoke, so there's a new head coach, Ron Rivera. Yeah. You got a new defensive coordinator, Jack Del Rio. Yep. You just mentioned there. I don't know how you determine. Is this the doctor that you just referenced? Is he the orthopedic guy? What's his physical role? therapy? He's he he's oh, he, physical therapy. He augments the current doctor staff. I you know medically. okay. Which obviously you've got a new head of athletic trainer, and that's the day to day guy. Right. You, know, you obviously you and and Dexter and, and NFL players rely on that athletic trainer to keep you yes. going at times, and so. Uh, and, but 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 Dr. Wilk, I think is coming on board as a consultant to help, uh, because the team obviously is identifying areas where they can improve, and you know, been a lot of been a lot of injuries over the last few years, and I say they're coincidental because there really is nothing tied them together, but. It shows you the commitment uh, that is being made uh, by this organization to uh, try to get this team into the Super Bowl. And it, it starts right. with every single detail. The medical staff is a big part of that. Yeah, so at this point, you think, you know, when you look at uh, the, the people that they've already hired, you've just got really two coaches that are on board at this point. And uh, a story that's, you know, not a story or anything, but obviously an area where people are, you know, that are – I don't want to say concerned, but interested. And that would be on offense. And now, you know, the offensive coordinator, is there any information there? I mean, is that that still wide open? Nothing. Uh, They will field 11 players on offense. Uh, The 4-3 is something Jack Del Rio talked about in terms of defense. They think that that's what he thinks he's going to do. Yeah. And and, and that would put Sweat down uh, with a hand on the Kerrigan down, too. And and that is immediately he told me that when I asked him. He goes, well, the personnel is such – that we would be best served to have these guys rushing, you know, mm-hmm. on every play. Which, obviously, your your linebackers. You take a look at your linebackers. If you go into a three four and you've got Ryan Anderson, who might be the prototypical strong side linebacker, might have been miscast as an outside linebacker in a three four, but as a strong side linebacker in a four three, he he's perfect. And then Cole Holcomb may be the weak side linebacker, the the guy that's got the speed. And then your middle linebacker. I would think it's going to be Reuben Foster. Offensively, John, no information. No information on any new coaches. Of course, a lot of has there been, speculation. I get, yeah, well, I don't know speculation, but has there been anybody interviewed other than people that – actually, the obvious is guys O'Connell. I mean, has there been anybody else interviewed besides him at this point? Not that I'm aware Not of. Not at this point. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. But, you know, I, again, what, what's impressed me with this whole move 
is the calculated nature that it's come down and all the research that's gone into it. And again, the Redskins knew they were in the market for a head coach five weeks into the season, six weeks into the right. season. So it gave them a head start. So I think many of these discussions have already taken place. I'm sure Ron Rivera, when he was hired, he had four weeks on the street to figure out what he was going to do. So he wasn't uh, just terminated. He was out after the Redskins beat him, in Mm -hmm. fact. So I think me not knowing doesn't mean the decision hasn't been made because I I think they probably know. Well, you can't announce it, and I can appreciate that. But, uh, you know, one of the concerns of people that I talk to is, or what you hear is, is that Dwayne Haskins, obviously he's the, you know, I'd have to believe at this point, the future quarterback of the Washington Redskins, that he got along so well with Kevin O'Connell that everybody's expecting, not expecting, but kind of thinking, well, do you want to, you know, he likes him, and you right. know, so there, there's a consideration there, but then in the big picture, I guess, that's where Rivera's got to d- decide, well, is this what we do, or do I have more confidence in somebody else, which is interesting enough. I believe North Turner's son, isn't it? I he, mean, that's one of the people assistant. that might be possibly... A- possibly. He was an assistant under Ron in Carolina, and Kevin O'Connell, I mean, you know, there's other jobs out there. I don't know. You don't know. He might yeah. want to move on. He's a exactly. young guy. And I, I just think that he, the trust that has been put in Ron Rivera and, and just my conversations with him, he, he, you'd like this guy a lot. He's a, he's a strong leader. He played the game. I mean, obviously, he probably tackled you, John, somewhere yes, along did. the way. You know, it's funny. Uh, you know? Years ago, I was telling uh, Dexter and, and uh, TCAT on the way out here that I – Back in 1998 or 99, I can't recall, I was doing games uh, for the Jets and pregames, you know, pregame stuff. Not pregame, but uh, preseason. Yeah. And the Philadelphia Eagles were playing the Jets up at the Meadowlands, and this guy walks up to me and introduced himself. It was Ron Rivera. He said, hey, John, you know, I'm Ron Rivera, and, you know, I used to play for the Chicago Bears back. And, and I thought, you know, I was so impressed by that. I thought, you know, who, who that, because that isn't something that I do. Dexter Manley's coming in here. I want to say, no. John probably flattened Ron Rivera. Joe, you think he ran Ron Rivera over? over. I'm a, I'm gonna ask the coach. Don't ask him. That's Dexter Man. You know what? I can't wait for your for your Dexter Manley podcast. I just can't well, wait. I, maybe we'll show that this week. And Stevie's got <laughs> Stevie's got to do some overtime today. Uh, if you get that no, podcast I'd sit on. I'm, I'm, we're gonna promote that for at least a couple of weeks. Oh. I think, you know, originally I said Dexter's definitely a two-part series, but now I'm thinking three, maybe four. Yeah. Maybe he's got his own mini-series. He's got, he's got sure. a wristwatch telephone, too. Yeah, that's pretty I cool. I mean, he is a gadget guy. He looked guy. like Dick Tracy at my table this morning. He got a phone <laughs> call, and he was talking into his wrist. I'm going, all right. All right, well, this seems like a good place to take a break, it and we'll is. come back, and maybe we'll uh, talk about some of the games that happened over the weekend. I want your opinion on what happened down in Dallas, because that was very odd. I'm going to run that by you. After this, did you know the Washington Redskins are sponsored by Coke Industries? That's K-O-C-H, Coke. Their 67,000 U.S. employees make a lot of things that make game day better. Greener turf, they make that. Stronger paper products for tailgating, they make that. Oh, and electrical components in TVs and smart devices. So you can watch a Redskins win anywhere. Yeah, Coke makes that too. See, all they make for on and off the field at K-O-C-H, Makes that.com. Well, it's wintertime, folks. In fact, uh, today is Tuesday, January 7th, and there's a very good chance we're going to get some snow this afternoon. The weather's getting a little colder. It isn't the snow so much that's going to bother your plumbing. It's that cold weather. And if you have a problem with anything of that nature, you get a freeze overnight and you find out you got a pump, a pipe that's broken, who are you going to call? Well, I'll tell you who to call O'Connor Plumbing. 1-866-RIGGLE-44. I've been, they've been at my house numerous times. I just drained the outside hose bibs uh, last night down in, the, uh, down in my uh, control room to get the last bit of water out of them. You, you close off the ball valve, and I went down and opened up that little bleeder valve and got the rest of the water out. My point being is you don't have to do that. Get old Connor Plumbing to do it. 1-866-RIGGLE-44. They'll take care of everything. 1-833. 833. Where'd I get 66? Well, 1833 Riggle 44. 866 Riggle 44. 866 Riggle 44. Thank you, TK. 833. Didn't I say 833? What is the number? The number is 833 Riggle 44. I'll write that down next time. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Well, one last thing before we get back to business. Looking for another chance to win? $100,000 scratch or replay from the Virginia, Virginia Lottery is exactly that. Now through March, 
31st, any non-winning Virginia lottery scratcher offers a shot at winning $500 in a daily drawing or even ten grand. Here's the lowdown. Any non-winning Virginia lottery scratcher can be entered into the daily drawing. In each daily drawing, two players win $500. Every entry into the daily drawing is automatically entered into the grand prize drawing, which is set for April the 7th. One lucky player will get $10,000. Visit VALottery.com slash replay for more information. The odds of winning a prize in the 100,000 scratcher replay promotion depend on the number of entries received. Ladies and gentlemen, stand back and watch the Phoenix rise from the ashes. Stand back. It's Riggo the Diesel. Okay, all I know is one eight three three Riggo forty four. That's how did that six come from? That's is there an area code eight six six? I don't know. That's toll free. It's a toll free. It's a toll free. It's a toll free number. Yeah, I think something just jumped. Eight three three is a free call too now. Yeah, eight three three is a free call. But uh, yeah, I must have jumped one notch. I I added the threes together, got a six, and then added another six. It's easy to do. Three Riggo forty four O'Connor Plumbing free call, and they're going to save you money. I forgot that last part, too. By the way, next time, T-Cat's going to do this spot. Good job, T-Cat. Anyway, okay, what do you want to ask me? Well, I, did you find it curious, John, that last week uh, the Redskins made a move uh, in the front office on Monday, uh, relieving Bruce Allen. Then uh, by Thursday, there was a press conference to announce Ron Rivera. And then by Monday, I guess it's Jack Del Rio, the new trainer. Things are happening pretty quickly. Correct. In Dallas. In Dallas. A week's worth of interviews with a head coach. Still in place. Is he, that what you're saying? Well, he was. Oh, no, with him. I get He you. was. Yeah, right. A week's worth of interviews, and they couldn't decide what they were going to do. And then, I guess they interviewed Mike McCarthy on Saturday. And then on Sunday, during the game, during the Philadelphia-Seattle game, they put out a press release saying they have moved on from Jason Garrett. During the game. That never happened. Who puts out a press release during an NFL game? That's what they did. And then Monday, they announced Mike McCarthy. So what were they talking about all last week? And how did it happen so quick? Why did they put out a press release during an NFL game? It's an NFL team. You're not supposed to steal the thunder from a, from a postseason game like that. It just seemed like very odd timing. And so, God, it makes me feel good that, that the Redskins actually made a move quick, uh, confident yeah, in their move. You got people coming in. You got Jack Del Rio here already. You see things moving. And it just it, maybe that shows you the direction of those two organizations right now. I hope so. Well, yeah, and I'm wondering, you know, you look at that because I thought the same thing. How after what ten years as a Jason yeah. Garrett wasn't he down there ten years? Ten years, yeah. How could you after that season ended? And you know, for Dallas fans, I got to believe it was a big disappointment for a lot of those folks. Yeah, correct. They had a lot of talent on that team. So. Why is it you need another week to talk to Jason Garrett to figure out if he's the right man for the job? I just it took ten years to get there, huh? It took ten years. It, wasn't that enough? I mean, I don't I mean, want to think that Jerry's a slow learner or you know a slow study, but it's he still needs a little bit of info before he could actually push him over the edge. I mean, and, that's and I see, you know, say today, also, oh, they're going to keep Kellen Moore, the offensive coordinator. Okay, why? I don't know. I mean, he's part of what what was there last year, also. Uh, the defensive guy, Chris Richard, I think that's his name, defensive coach, they not like the coordinator. Him. They want to keep him. He had been a hot topic, hot hot prospect for a head coaching job. And now I see today that Jason Garrett might go to the Giants. As a head coach? Yes. Yes, they, they've got the guy in Baylor in their sights, Matt Rule. No, he just and, got hired by the Carolina Panthers. Matt Rule did. Matt Rule. Did he? So that's so breaking that's, news. That's announced this morning. Matt okay. Matt Rule to the Panthers. Okay. And who the Giants got? They're looking at, they're looking Giants at got nothing? Jason Garrett. Jason Garrett, which would really be str- – he played for the Giants, right? Yeah, played I think for the, that's he's a correct. Backup. Yeah, I think you're right. He's backup. Mm-hmm. I yeah, well, he never guy, was a starter in the league. No. As far as no. I know. And you know what? I, you know, everybody deserves to work. I got nothing against nobody. I'm just saying. No, kind, exactly. It just seems kind of weird. Well, it would seem to me, I mean, based on, you know, his record in Dallas, because I'm thinking – did he even have a winning record? I think it's like 500, basically. Close to 500. I know he had uh, a little bit over 500, a little bit under. Three playoff wins in 12 years. Three playoff wins? Saying. That that predates him. Three play, maybe two playoff wins during his tenure. But the same can be said about the Redskins. Two playoff wins during that same yeah. time. No, I understand so, that. But you then, know, uh, 
two playoff wins since for the for the. I want, no, twenty three. There's twenty years in two playoff wins. Or yeah, something. I don't know what it is. I, that might be wrong too. I shouldn't open my mouth when it comes to stats like that if I don't know what I'm talking about. But but so, anyway, it's just it's the court. It's the it's the head coaching carousel and. It's still going it, on. It just seems like the Redskins were on this rocket ship, ready to go, with everything fully loaded, had everything packed, ready to go. Boom. Day after the season, they're moving forward, which has been impressive. No, yeah, no. and you know what's, what's strange, too, is and I think it's you know there's no real set rule anymore in how you do things in the NFL as far as hiring coaches and or general managers. You know, there used to be, in the old days, you would have a general manager – and then the general manager would pick a coach, and then a coach would pick all of his assistant coaches. I think that's the way Joe Gibbs went down. Bobby Beathard brought him in. Yeah. Joe Gibbs then brought in. Of course, Richie Pettibone was already here. He interviewed Richie, said, I think i got to find, you know, this guy's solid. And then all of a sudden, maybe from Richie, he gets. But anyway, he pretty much hired his own staff. Nowadays, what you're saying down in Texas, they already come with, a, you know, the, the coach McCarthy comes in, he's, and here's your offensive coordinator, and meet your defensive coordinator. Yeah, your and your general manager's already there in Dallas. Well, we already, yeah, that's a, for you know, he, he's unique. And the only thing he doesn't do is play on the field. <laughs> he wishes he's going to be a little old for that, but he wants to yeah, coach, I think too. he is a little old for it. Which, again, you look at this, and the Redskins have said, and this is what Ron Rivera said, it's kind of a coach-centric type of deal here, and the, there is no GM here right now. Ron Rivera has a lot of responsibilities then you look up to New York and you wonder, and you look at some of the records of these teams that actually have general managers or don't, and Gettleman is their general manager. And last week, man, he was part of the press conference that they just they killed him upside one down the other. And, and he, he, he got through the press conference, but he hires a coach now, whoever it may be, and if that doesn't work now, is Gettleman. Yeah, well, they thought the he was, he might have been on the chopping block this year as well. His name was mentioned that they might be even looking for a new general manager. So, yeah, mm-hmm. he's got to be on, you know, he's got only so much oxygen in his uh, room. <laughs> that's, that's right, and it's and the room is leaking. Yeah, It's, it's exactly. leaking oxygen. It's or not, they're pumping in CO2, one or the other. I don't know. Maybe but, just CO, <laughs> carbon monoxide, colorless, tasteless. Uh <laughs> I wanted to uh, I wanted to kind of jump if you want to uh, talk about the games this weekend. Yeah, but because you know it is really interesting. How about and I guess that's just the way I've evolved over the years, having been a former player. That the regular season's a regular season. You kind of, eh, but then you get to the postseason when they take away the net, and you kind of go, okay, this is a little bit more interesting. And I kind of there's one there's one play, and I don't know. Did you watch many of these games? I watched. Almost every minute of every game. Okay, I good. just ate it all up. Okay, well, I think it was the first game, which was uh, Buffalo and uh, the Texans. Yes. First game on Saturday. And they get down late in the game, and there's about a minute to go. It looks like the Texans the Texans are up by three. And Josh Allen, the quarterback, he, he, you know, he's, he played very well at the beginning of the game, which they said characteristically he doesn't. And then, you know, he comes on stronger at the end of the game. It almost seemed like it was a reverse deal, but – he runs for a first down. Do you remember this play? With a minute left in the game, they're down by three. He's thrown a pass, completed it for a first down. Now, he runs for a first down, and before he, as he's getting tackled, he throws he lateral the ball and the guy, backwards to nobody. Right. I and mean, the guy so swiped he, it out of bounds. He just – Yeah, the, A complete – what is that called? Ex- I mean, Inexperience. Inexperience. He caved. I mean, it's beyond – he caved. I, he completely lost track of where he was. I it was, was almost like he, like he blacked out. <laughs> Sam lot something. I don't know. Maybe he took a shot or something. But, but, but look at it, Larry. They, like I said, there's a minute left on the clock, and they're in midfield for crying out loud. Yeah. And you know they got, they, they've got a first down, and he just like it's a, in my mind he thought it was the last play of the game somehow. Yeah. Did he look up at the clock and think it said ten seconds? That's the only thing I can think of. I don't of. know, but there there was a few plays like that. I also think that in that oh yeah, and then the fourth and what twenty seven or twenty three that they, you know that Mc, Mc, uh, what's his name there Watson. Co- well, no, the, well the coach went for. I'm talking about the Buffalo coach. Well, oh, McDermott. Had, yeah, he yeah, went McDermott, for it. McDermott. He went for it fourth and t- I'm going. That didn't make no sense to me either. No, but. On the field, one thing that I, I reflect back on, which I thought was, you know, people asked me, are you happy to see Kirk Cousins do well? I mean, I like, I like Kirk Cousins. I know him. Uh, what I could say is this. He outplayed Drew Brees in that game. Drew Brees didn't look that great. That last fumble by Drew Brees, I mean, I know he might have a banged-up thumb or something, but that just basically gave away that game, that turnover. And I almost think that number seven, Hill, their quarterback, who they they evoked the name of Rigo during the broadcast? Did you hear that? No, I didn't. 
Taysom Hill had a run up the left sideline where he trucked this DB, and he was chugging. It was a, a, a little rigo ish and the announcer, I don't know who the announcers were, and they said, he looked like John Riggins on that play. And, John, it's been a long time since you played. They're still using you as the measuring stick. White dude. White <laughs> dude versus white dude. <laughs> Average white back. Well, yeah. Yeah. And also with Henry, with Tennessee, it had headlines in the papers that they – it was it, he he rigged them to death. He rigged them to death. He rigged them to death is. <laughs> Did they use an S on the at last or at a rigged? Indeed, rigged. Rigged. Rigged them to death. It should have been rigged. Rigged. It would have been rigged, right? Yeah, rigged. It should. It should. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll take a little John, break, and John, uh, Larry, you, are, you got more are, information for us. John, you are in a very entertaining. Look yeah. today, this is the funniest you've been, I think, in a long time on the podcast. All right, whether on the field or in the classroom, the Redskins believe learning should be fun. That's why we partnered with youth entrepreneurs to bring their engaging, hands-on style of learning to classrooms in the D.C. metro area. Youth Entrepreneurs Curriculum was created by educators for educators. That means it's flexible, fun, and absolutely free. To learn more about youth entrepreneurs and how to experience it for yourself, go to getye.org. Hey, I'm bored, I'm broke, and I'm back. Who's bored? Who's broke? And who's back? I wanted to always see the redwoods. I wanted to see the Rocky Mountains. I wanted to see the Painted Desert, the Petrified Forest, the Grand Canyon. That was like the land that I always wanted to go to. John Riggins. All right, Larry, we got uh, we got into one game a little bit there. Uh, is there anything else you got here before we... No, I mean, you know, I guess the uh, the requiem for the Patriots, you know, maybe that's a little premature. I don't think so. Yeah, you, don't think so you don't think it's not premature? Well... You think they're done? Yeah, I mean, it's funny because I think that this is what I was wanting to talk to, and kind of, it works out fine because you talked about Breeze just a second ago, and he did not look... I mean, I'm not... You know, the thumb injury... If it was really that bad, then I guess maybe Hill would be their quarterback. I don't know Bridgewater for sure. Bridgewater would have been. Huh? Bridgewater. Oh, Bridgewater. Bridgewater, Bridgewater played Hill. during the year, yeah. I didn't know if uh, Hill, yeah. because he comes in and does, well, he threw that 50-yard pass. But, yeah, he didn't play well. He's 40 years old. And, and actually, this whole season, they say, I haven't watched that many games, but Brady hasn't been playing well. No. 42 years old. Uh, and he looks, you know, you can find a kind of, you look, and he doesn't, he looks old. Uh and I'm thinking, how do they go? He's going to be a free agent and all this stuff. I don't know. Is that going to push them over the edge? You don't even know. I mean, you know, you do all the attentions on Brady. Is Belichick? I mean, he's done this now for 20 years. I guess he'll continue on. Or well, is there going to be? This will never be the same once Brady leaves. Let's be honest. I mean, I for well, them to be able you know, to see, this is where this is where I'm not 100 percent sure. It really depends on who they have. I mean, they had Garofalo, yep. and they got rid of him, and that had a little bit to do with Brady. I think rumors I heard. I don't know, Todd. Did you ever hear this about Brady and the fact that Garofalo he might have felt like was breathing down his neck a little bit, felt threatened, and, and yeah, felt yeah, threatened. That's why they and they hustled him off to San Francisco, which now in hindsight you look, well, they did win a Super Bowl, so maybe it was a good thing, but their future looks a little cloudy. But I've always contended. I think, you know, I was looking through the 100 greatest players or whatever, and then I started looking through some of the positions, and they got, and I don't know if I saw it correctly, but they had Tom Brady listed as the as the number one of all quarterbacks that ever played in the NFL. Did yeah. you guys see this list? Yeah, well, you got a thumbs down from Dexter, and everybody's got well, their my, opinion. Well, my point you know. being is that, he, and I've said it before on here, he's by far, I would guess, considering in modern times, the most, uh, what do you call it, decorated or yeah, the most, or most, the most accomplished. accomplished. There's a championship. But now, yeah. does that make him, you know, from my perspective, does that make him the best? I say not necessarily right. because, and I go back to years ago when Matt, uh, what, who's the quarterback? He ended up going to Kansas City. Matt Castle. He fizzled out there, but with the, with the Patriots, you know, from the beginning of the season, he's a backup quarterback, hadn't played at all, gets the team into the playoffs. How's that work? Went 10 and 6. Yeah. My point being is, is it really that difficult to have success as a quarterback when you play for the, for, in this era, when you play for the uh, New England Patriots? And I'm going to go, I don't think so. You start off with the fact they've always played, and they still do for the most part. Buffalo's finally made a contribution, but they played in a passy division all these years. Yep. And that, you know, that counts, and people kind of overlook all this stuff. So, and I have great respect for Tom Brady, don't get me wrong, but, you know, I just think that 
if for him to go someplace else, and that's a possibility. What they say is, I mean, because he's going to be a free agent. That he, you know, that uh, is their future. Really, all of a sudden, does it close in New England? And I'm thinking, I don't know who their backup is, but you know, if they've got a decent backup, I think the team will be decent. But if not, I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know their backup, but I can't imagine him playing playing someplace else. I mean, you know, there's been examples these all-time greats who have tried to hang on an extra year Johnny well, Manning and I, went and got and he did pick up a Super Bowl he did Denver. he did but but it wasn't his doing Joe so much Montana a, went to Kansas City right. right he had a little bit of a run there Johnny Unitas had nothing when he went to San Diego right. it was Joe just Namath to the Rams. Joe right. Namath but of course you know he had uh, John uh, Hadle to the Rams and Green Bay Packers I don't know I mean I think that what you saw, the Patriots lost their last two games of the year. They lost the season finale and lost the playoff game. They're on a two-game losing streak, and nobody expected that. So it's because of the expectations. Yeah. Well, they, they lost to Miami. It kind of yeah. opened a bunch of eyes, and then they turned yeah. around and got throttled by the Tennessee Titans. Let me ask you this, Larry, based on what we're talking about. Because they, I've seen this written, and I don't know who necessarily wrote it, but that – somebody like Tom Brady, that there are teams out there that are having trouble at the box office who would bring Tom Brady in, you know, and, and, and it's kind of the new – I remember years ago being at Chase Stadium one afternoon, and I'm watching, and I'm sitting there with Al Woodall, who was the backup to Joe Namath, and this guy, he's knocking – you know, he keeps knocking balls over the fence, and Woodall goes, who is that guy? And I said, well, that's Willie Mays. Point being is they and Willie Mays yeah. had nothing at that point, right. but he brought people in. It to was see embarrassing Willie Mays. him in the field, right? Willie oh, Mays yeah. couldn't catch a ball anymore. But my, but what I'm saying is, is how can a franchise really bring in somebody where there's no future? I, I don't see it. I mean, or, I mean, unless you have a team that's turnkey to bring him in as a you know as a marquee player to bring people. Where maybe you win a little bit, but the, where, where's it going to eventually go? So what go? do you think? Is he, he going to move? Is he going to move? Is he going to stay, or is he going to retire? What do you think? My guess is that I would think. I mean, I don't know because he's a different cat for sure. But to play that long and to, you know, let's face it, he's been paid well over all these years. His wife makes more money than he does. I, you know, you'd look at that and you'd you'd almost considering the risk that you take when you go out on a football field. Right. That after that much time and being at that age, you'd have to say, I would think he would be a little foolhardy to want to continue to play. That would be my opinion. But then again, I don't know. And this, and now as I look at it, I'm coming from a different a different era, and maybe I look at it that way. I can't appreciate that the game has been san you know sanitized somewhat, particularly for quarterbacks. That the risk I talk about isn't nearly as great as it used to be. But you got to figure, Tom. You played for twenty some years, or maybe it's twenty years. You know, there's a life after football, but not everybody feels that way. Yeah, you know what? His best chance to win is in New England. Their best chance to win is with him. That's my. Opinion. That's a pretty good. That's a pretty that's, good observation. That's I would my say. Opinion. Unless they do. You just want to clean. pick these games because Dexter looks impatient. I got to run. Do you want to do this real quick? And last week you had three road teams three win. All four teams this week at home are the favorites. So let me know what John Riggins thinks. First, Vikings at 49ers. I like 49ers. I don't. I just think they're playing well. They're playing. They're, they're rested a week. I think you know Minnesota did what they they got by, and this will be an interesting test for Kirk Cousins. Another one. I mean, one game to me doesn't make all of a sudden you're in the sunshine. I would agree. Ravens big favorites at home hosting Tennessee, coming off a big win. I can't see how Tennessee wins this game. It'll be you know. In other words, I think that Baltimore has to. I think they'll take control of this game. All right, you got the Texans on the road at the Chiefs, and you know Andy Reid's playoff. Record is what it is. Chiefs do have a great quarterback. Yeah, I, I, and you know, and they, they were a, 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 a offsides from being in the Super Bowl last year. Right. So they had, they had throttled the, new, the eventual Super Bowl champions on their home field, and I got to believe after this year, it's their turn that they win as well. John, going with the home teams finally, uh, Seahawks are at the Packers. Packers. I might take the Seahawks here. Oh. I might take the Seahawks. I think that I, I think they're playing well. They find this the young receiver they've got. He's coming on stronger and stronger. This will start to grow. He's an impressive they, kid. Yeah, exactly. He's he's like the tight, you know, the wide receiver everybody wants. So yeah, that's that's my picks, Larry. Thank you and we'll see you next week. John, we'll see how you do. Thank you. 100K Scratcher Replay. We're here with Bob, who's about to play a Virginia Lottery Scratcher. Here he goes, and he didn't win. Sorry, Bob. Wait, check the replay. I don't believe it. He turned his non-winning Scratcher into a winner. 100K Scratcher Replay.
enter any non-winning Virginia Lottery scratcher for a chance to win $500 daily or the $10,000 grand prize. Visit VALottery.com slash replay for details. Lots of winning depend on the number of entries received. Winter is the season for adventure. And if you want a car as exciting as your lifestyle, then it has to be an all-wheel drive Honda SUV. With more features, the CRV has standard Honda sensing, more room for friends, the pilot has seating for eight, more comfort, the HRV has available heated seats, and more rugged. The Passport is built for adventure with ample cargo space and hidden storage compartments. Winter adventure is calling, and Honda is ready to answer. See your local Honda dealer today. Dear customer service, I can always count on Novak. My power is always on, my payments always go through, and Novak actually cares about the community they serve. Dear Novak, your electric costs are reasonable. Some electricity is from alternative sources, and cost reductions are passed along during the year. Thanks. Novak, power you can count on. Daryl Green here. I'm used to winning teams, and I know the value of physical health, but financial health is also important. Having the right bank on your team is critical to a winning formula. Businesses need positive cash flow to succeed. That's why I recommend Main Street Bank for your business banking. I'm a founding director of Main Street Bank, and my formula for success on the field is the same off the field. Work hard and surround yourself with great teammates. Trust me, you want Main Street Bank on your team. Go to mstreetbank.com. We bank where you breathe. Member FDIC.